We are here. I'm Sarah Accioni. <laughs> I'm Jerry Accioni. And we are here today at Woodstock Square Denzel location in Woodstock. So thank you so much to uh, to Kim and Lisa for hosting Our us. Our sixth location. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I've, I've got that many fingers, right? Yeah. I can count that high okay. at least. Anyways, yes. Our sixth location. Thank you so much to Kim and uh, Lisa. You've been great for us. Thanks for letting us take over your space. Like literally have taken over their entire entryway here. Yes. So thank you. Anyways, sorry, we are here with Natasha. We are talking into well today. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's Tumbler? Tumbler. Tumbler. Yeah. yeah. There we go. See? Perfect. Uh, tell us about uh, into well. So Indwell uh, creates affordable housing communities for individuals uh, seeking health, wellness, and belonging. And how we do that is we provide apartment supports um, and we try and keep our rents as deeply affordable as possible. So uh, some individuals uh, aren't aware of what, what that means in terms mm -hmm. of affordable rent here in Woodstock. Um, most of the individuals who are housed with us, their main source of income is ODSP, which is the Ontario Disability Support Program. Yeah. And that check is divided into two portions. And so one is the basic needs and one is the shelter allowance. And the shelter allowance is uh, at $486. Ooh. The average market rent for a one bedroom apartment here in Woodstock is $838. Obviously a lot more than that, right? Yeah. So you're leaving someone whose main source of income might be ODSP or a similar um, source. Uh, that, that total amount is around $1,100. So when 800 of that is being mm -hmm. spent on rent alone, it leaves a really small portion for mm -hmm. them to grocery shop, get to and from appointments, engage in their community, take public transit, those sorts of things. And so what Indwell does is tries to keep that rent as deeply affordable as possible so that they can still actively engage within the community and feel like they belong. Well, wow, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. So how does someone you, utilize your services? Where do they go for information? So we do have a website, it's just indwell.ca. Um, there's lots more about us as an organization on that site. Um, if they are interested in applying to our housing, we do have an application that can be found on that website as well. Okay. Um, someone would apply to move into uh, one of our two locations here in Woodstock and then from there we uh, have an intake meeting with them and during that intake meeting we get to know them. So, you know, have you lived independently before? What sort of skills do you have? Why is it that you're seeking housing with us as opposed to somewhere else in the community? Uh, we really make people know uh, that we are compassionate, involved landlords. And so someone who doesn't want an involved landlord, we're not the housing for them. Um, but for people who want to belong in part of a community and want to be asked how they're doing, want to have programs and yeah, services programs. available to yeah. them, they are really interested in, in moving in with So us. it's an ongoing support system for them then? It's, yeah. it's not, here's your rent, here's your keys. No. It's continued support. Right. And so our support ranges um, depending on the individual. We do, uh, in that intake meeting, we let people know that we do apartment checks. We do those once a month uh, mm -hmm. where we okay. actually go into each tenant's apartment. And we do that for two reasons. One, you get to recognize what's, what a normal environment looks like for each person. And sometimes that's, you know, there might be a couple dishes around, laundry's typically put away, yeah. the bed's made. If we then go into someone's apartment and things are totally flipped upside down, uh, dishes haven't been done, laundry scattered, scattered throughout the apartment, it then um, it, it allows us to ask the individual, how, how are you doing? Because this mm -hmm. isn't normal for you. Right. And people want to be asked and there's often a really uh, good explanation um, as to why their apartment might be that way. But it also allows us to then offer that support piece mm -hmm. to say, well, if that's what you're struggling with right now, how can I help you? And people want to be helped. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes they're just too too shy or, or yeah. embarrassed even to ask for the help. Yes, yeah. exactly. And a lot of them are supported by community organizations. And so it's just bridging that connection once again um, for that individual. Yeah, I would think that like CMHA might be involved with some yeah. and like yeah. That's what you mean by different organizations? Yeah, so I mentioned the majority of individuals living with us, their main source of income being ODSP. Mm -hmm. um, I would not, about 90% of our tenants do have a mental health diagnosis, so they are mm -hmm. connected to other community organizations like the Canadian Mental Health Association, the Oxford Act team, the Community Health um, Centre, those sorts of things. Right. So Absolutely. how is Indowell funded? Like, is it, do we need extra donations? Is there government funding for yeah. it? So I mentioned the apartment support mm -hmm. piece. Um, and so 15% uh, of our budget 
actually comes from donors and helps cover some of those costs for the operating costs. We also have great connections with uh, other local organizations like the United Way who recognize that apartment support piece being so key in, in terms of people feeling like they belong to our community. So yeah, we do rely a great deal on donations from our community members as well. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's really good. I love the work you're doing here in the community. Thanks. It's it's very much needed, mm -hmm. as we know, yeah. with rents being so high on a regular mm -hmm. basis. I mean, it's mm -hmm. quite shocking to hear that. Mm -hmm. The median being 800, over $800. Over $800. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, just, it gives yeah. people their independence back, right? And it gives yeah. them their self-esteem and yeah. to know that they can live a normal life like everybody else and be involved. Exactly. In a nice place. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what are the two locations? You mentioned the two locations, so yeah. people that don't know, um, where are they? For the past two years, uh, you may have noticed some renovations happening at Harvey Woods Lofts. Yep. Uh, so that <laughs> yeah. is one of our most beautiful locations. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. of our locations. The other location, and um, we've actually been here in Woodstock um, for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. I think we're approaching the 13 year mark. Um, and so that's at Blossom Park and it's right. off Devonshire. Um, and there we have a 26 bedroom group home and 27 independent apartments. Now our group home is actually closing right. uh, in the next two weeks. So we've uh, had some assessments done to the building. It's not accessible, uh, so major renovations were needing to take place. We're also finding that people want to stay living independently mm -hmm. and there are a number of community resources available to make that happen. Um, and so we just weren't getting the interest in terms of people who were seeking okay. housing. Yeah. So what's happening is actually 13 of those individuals, uh, some had transitioned into other group home settings because that is the level of support that they were requiring. Some actually transitioned into long-term care or retirement care, but 13 are still remaining and we'll move over to Harvey Woods Loft's new addition Good. that nice. is completing within the next uh, couple weeks. Oh, so it is that close. Uh, it is that yeah, close. Is. Um, and so the uh, support staff will be relocating with them to Harvey Woods Loft so that they can still receive the medication support and they will still receive one hot meal a day. That a group home will be torn down and then redeveloped into 33 apartments again with that increased wow. staffing support so everybody yeah. has their own place to live um, but also the reassurance of staff that's on excellent site. so if people mm -hmm. want to give what's their the best way to offer support um, there's a number of ways in which people give. So we have a lot of groups who come in, um, who volunteer their time, mm -hmm. um, which allows a lot of um, opportunity for our tenants to engage with other community mm -hmm. members as opposed to staff all the time. Right. And then the other way in which people can give is financially. Financial support, yeah. of course. Yeah, and uh, all that information can be found on our website. Okay, great. Yeah. And with it being the holiday season too, it'd be nice to you know if we're contributing to community um, services mm -hmm. that we need. So yeah. it's the holiday spirit. Let's uh, let's help out some local agencies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great. Well. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank We're you, actually yeah. going to see you a little later on tonight, of oh, course, yeah. at the uh, <laughs> celebration dinner. Yeah. So we'll look yeah. forward to that. And uh, thanks for Perfect. coming on your Oxford and letting us spread the word. Good. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thanks, Natasha. Thanks. And please, everybody at home, please be generous, okay? Mm -hmm. Especially this time of year, the holiday season. Mm -hmm. uh, be generous to all organizations. And Indwell is one that, um, you know, needs attention. It's a mm -hmm. much-needed uh, much support services in our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, till next time, that's it for us here at Your Oxford. And don't forget, please like, comment, tag a friend, and share. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon.